Hello and welcome to the V-Rate for Form Z Quick Start Guide for Interactive Rendering. Now, Interactive Rendering allows you to see any changes that you make to your scene update an ongoing render in real time without needing to restart the render manually with every change. Now, the first thing that we need to do is to ensure that the V-Ray palette is enabled by clicking in the Palettes menu and click on V-Ray. Now, open the V-Ray Settings palette by clicking the first icon in the V-Ray palette. Now, to set V-Ray to use Interactive, simply enable this Interactive checkbox. Now, before I render, I'm going to resize the project window here a little bit to open up a little room on my screen. Now, I'll press Render. One of the first things you'll notice is that the size of the rendered image is the same size as the project window. We can easily change that by going back to the V-Ray Settings palette and going to Render Output section of the settings. Here, we can define the size of the window by changing the image width and image height parameters. I'm going to go ahead and change the width to 800 pixels. Notice that since the aspect ratio box is set to window proportions, the image height will change automatically to ensure that the aspect ratio is kept the same. Now, since we're using interactive, the rendering will update automatically as soon as we make these changes. The next thing we're going to do is enable material overrides. Now, this does two things. It'll speed up render times, and, and more importantly, this is a good way to gauge lighting and camera without having the distractions of the materials themselves. Now, I'm going to go ahead and switch to the Material Override section of the V-Ray Settings palette and enable overrides by checking Override Enabled. I'm also going to lighten the material up a little bit as well so that the scene won't be overly dark. You can also use a V-Ray material here as well, but this basic material is totally fine for our purposes. Another example of some changes you can make while V-Ray Interactive Render is going on would be in the camera settings. You can adjust the exposure, for example, by increasing and decreasing the slider. Although a value of 14 is generally good to use when using the V-Ray Sun and Sky system, as we're doing in this scene. You can also add depth of field using the Use Depth of Field setting and the corresponding sliders. This blurs the image anywhere that is not close to the focus distance using the defocus amount to gauge how much. Now, another effect we can use is called vignetting, which adds the effect of darkening around the edges of the image, as you can see here. The environment settings can also be changed with interactive running as well. For example, if we go to the environment section of the settings and change the texture of the background from the sky to a simple color, and then change the multiplier to make it brighter, you will see the changes happen in the frame buffer right away. Now let's change this back to our sky. Okay, now we can make changes to the scene inside the scene window. Moving the camera in this window will update in the frame buffer. You can also freeze the camera in place by using the Lock View button in the V-Ray palette. This makes sure that any changes made to the camera will not update in the interactive render, but all the other changes, such as to the geometry or to the V-Ray settings, will update that rendering. I'm going to go ahead and unlock the view and move the view back to its home position. Now, okay, let's move some geometry in the scene. I'd like to move this tree over to the left a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and grab it and drag it to the left. You'll see that as it's being dragged, it updates in the V-Ray frame buffer interactively. We can also make changes to the lighting in the scene. I'll go and grab the sunlight and move it around to get a better lighting solution for the scene, and you'll see how useful interactive rendering really is. You'll also notice that as I move it around, you'll see that the environment changes as well because the V-Ray Sky System is directly linked to that sun. 
You can even disable the light. If I find the V-Ray sunlight in the lights palette and disable the shining toggle, the sun effectively disappears, leaving the scene to be lit only by the sky environment. Now, this is typically not recommended as this provides no direct light for your scene, which we can cover in a later video. I'm going to go ahead and re-enable the V-Ray sunlight. Okay, now let's bring back the materials by disabling the material overrides in the material override section of the V-Ray settings palette. Now, let's say I don't like this cobblestone material in the street. I can change this by finding the street cobblestones material in the materials palette, which I already have selected, and then double clicking it to access material parameters palette. I'm going to go ahead and use one of the pre-made materials that come with V-Ray for Form Z. In the ground library, we can find several asphalt materials. If I double click one, it's going to change the material type to a V-Ray material and then load in the appropriate settings to reference the material correctly. You'll also notice that the material in the interactive render changes as well. Now, one final thing I'd like to cover is that V-Ray Interactive Rendering supports GPU rendering as well, meaning this can be processed on your video card. If you have substantial GPU hardware, this can drastically increase performance by utilizing your CUDA graphics hardware rather than your CPU. To enable GPU rendering, you first have to stop any ongoing rendering. Then, simply go back to the V-Ray Settings palette and toggle the Use GPU checkbox, and then fire up a new rendering by clicking on the Render button once again. And that pretty much sums up what you need to know to get started with interactive rendering. Thank you for joining us for this quick start video on using interactive rendering in V-Rate for Form Z.